We know that hell is a place of eternal torment and separation from God. But what exactly is the nature of that torment? And what is it, what is it going to be like practically to spend an eternity in hell? We'll talk about it on this week's episode of Revelation Unveiled on Faith by Reason. Welcome to Faith by Reason. The website behind it all is faithbyreason.net. There you will find hundreds of hours of study material, blogs, podcasts, and video. And we are continuing our study of the book of Revelation. We are nearing the end point, wrapping things up. We are wrapping up our series, our brief series on hell with this episode. And then we will talk about heaven, or the new Jerusalem, and then that'll be it. We'll wrap things up and we'll be done with Revelation. So on the last couple episodes, we talked about the great white throne judgment, those who rejected God, who rejected Jesus and his plan during their life will be will be uh, justly judged. They wanted to be separated from God, so they will be separated from God for eternity by their choice. They'll be thrown into the hell, the lake of fire. In the last episode, we talked about what hell is and what it isn't, you know, factually. In this episode, we're going to wrap things up by just looking at things practically. What will it be like in hell? What will we be experiencing? And I don't think it's going to be what it is popularly um, depicted as. And uh, just to be candid, I've, I've said this before. I've said it during the last two episodes that, again, being frank, being candid, I have a problem with the concept of hell. It's bothered me. It's always bothered me. I've been a Christian most of my life. I understand Christian doctrine. I accept Christian doctrine. But be that as it may, the concept of hell, I have a tough time with it. A tough time with the idea of people who do not choose God to spend eternity on fire, burning. It, It Honestly, it seems cruel and unusual. It seems unjust. And we know God is just, so he would not give an unjust punishment. So something's got to give. Either... I, either either hell is is just punishment being on fire forever or i just don't understand what it means maybe i you know, maybe the the fault is mine and i don't understand how it's just because we know god can't be unjust that's unacceptable so what what is hell what how is it just for people to be in this lake that for, burns with fire and brimstone forever and, and i gave the example before about you know suffering a burn you know, nothing severe, you know, but I, I, I like to cook. Cooking is my hobby. And as such, you know, you're going to get burned once in a while. You know, you I've had a, a situation not too long ago where I grabbed a skillet that I had taken out of the oven. I for, and I, I was cooking something in the skillet, put it in the oven to finish off, took it out of the oven and got distracted. I come back and gra- and just instinctively grabbed the handle, you know, forgetting that it had just been in the oven and it burned. It hurt a lot. It hurt like hell. <laughs> no, well, pun slightly intended. But I only had it for like a second or two, but I got second degree burns, you know, blisters and all that. It was, you know, it wasn't pretty sight. But again, that was me just grabbing it for a couple seconds and it, it really, really hurt. And even afterwards, it was throbbing pain. I had, I had put ice on it, but anytime I took the ice off for any length of time during that first hour of it, I started feeling that same raw pain again. So I can't imagine it would be tough to imagine holding on to that same hot skillet handle for a minute. 10 minutes would be in- insane and hours unimaginable, but a day, a week, a month, years, years, eternity. My mind cannot conceive of how unbelievably torturous that would be. I'm not capable of it. And But is that just for the evil of the world? Even if you think of the most evil people, you know, you, you know, Hitler, Stalin, Mao, you know, Jeffrey Dahmer, Attila the Hun, most of the popes, even people who, who are child traffickers like, you know, Jeffrey Epstein, who are people who I think are the lowest form of life on earth. Anyone who harms a child, especially sexually, is, again, to me, that's lower than Hitler. And I'd be OK with those people suffering torment for a certain amount of time, days, maybe even weeks. But after that, it just starts to seem excessive. I mean, there's still human beings who made horrible mistakes. But do they deserve to have the, that torment forever? Seems unjust. So I need to. So what I have to do is look at what it really means. What we have to do is look at what it really means and see if it really falls into the categories of, of that eternal fleshly suffering. And honestly, I don't think it does for several reasons. 
scientific reasons, biblical reasons, and logical reasons. Uh, let's look at the logic slash science of it first. We know that whatever hell is, that fire that burns, fire and brimstone, and we talked about it last time, uh, brimstone is the, the element sulfur, and we know scientifically how hot sulfur burns. Sulfur burns at about 450 degrees, you know, very hot. So, but what we can know is that hell will not be our current physical fleshly bodies, well, not ours, well, those who are in hell, I don't plan to be there, but those who are in the lake of fire, it, it can't be them you know, burning in their normal human bodies that we have and experiencing the pain that we feel in our human bodies. Because as we talked about at the Great White Throne Judgment episode, people won't be in their human bodies at this time. Everything physical has passed away. It says at the beginning of the Great White Throne section that heaven and earth have fled away from the throne of God. There's no place for them. Everyone is gone. No one is, al no one is physically alive anymore who is, who has died in um, every, every, no one's physically alive anymore who's being who is being judged everyone has already died at armageddon and those who were evil during the millennium they were burned up um in that final uh, judgment at, judgment at the end of the millennium so there are no human bodies left so we won't so whoever is in hell will not be experiencing the same kind of burn that we would experience if you you know again burn your hand like i did or if you're in a building that catches on fire and you're unfortunately caught in it it won't be the same we're everyone's going to be a spirit and even and there's also an argument to be made that people will have some sort of evil people will have some sort of resurrected body. It won't be the same resurrection body that Christians will have because our bodies will be modeled on the resurrection body of Jesus. You know, he had when he rose from the dead. So it won't be that same type of body, but there it is something called the, you know, the, the resurrection of the, of the, the evil dead. And I, I believe that will, the dead people who are evil, who are going to be in hell are just going to be spirits. They're not going to have physical bodies, but again, an argument can be made that some type of body is resurrected, but even so it won't be the same type of human body. How do we know that? Because the human body couldn't last forever in 450 degree heat. We, we, you'd last about an hour and then you'd be burned to ashes. There'd be nothing left. So it can't be the human body, whether it's just your spirit or some type of modified form of physical body. It won't be what we the bodies we have now, so it won't be the same type of pain, the same type of nerve endings. But what will it be like? What will that actual torment be? And I have a provocative and perhaps unusual take on this, because as I said at the end of the, of the last episode, hell will not be the hottest place in eternity. It won't be. There will be a place that is even hotter than hell. And it will be the place that we actually want to be. What, what, am I, what do I mean by that? We need to look at what the nature of the spiritual realm is, which we're going to talk about quite a bit in the next, in the, uh, the next major study that I do, which is going to be on the book of Genesis once we've wrapped up in Revelation. But when we look at the spiritual realm, what is it? It's the realm where God, Jehovah, Yahweh, where he dwells. So what would that be like? Well, we know about we know God's nature um, you know, spiritually, but there's also a passage passages in the Bible that talk about his nature in a quote unquote physical sense. And what we know about God from from the uh, the book of John, John's epistles, it says that God is light and there is no darkness in him at all. I'll have that verse on the screen. God is light and there is no darkness in him at all. God is 100%. Jehovah is 100% light. What is light? Light is its energy. The spiritual realm is going to be full of the light of the energy of God. It's a creative energy that he used to create the world. That's who he is. He is he is 100% unlimited, infinite energy. Energy by its very nature is hot. Energy is hot. And it's in God being the ultimate light, the infinite light. It means his, his energy, the heat is going to be un, un, indescribable. It's going to be heat that, you know, that, that the uh, material creation cannot be in the presence of. In fact, we know that when uh, Moses was speaking to, to God after the exodus, uh, after the exodus of the Israelites, he said God, to God, he said, I want to see you. I want to, I want to see you face to face. And God said, you can't see me face to face because no flesh can be in my presence and live. Why? 
because his presence is too hot. It'll burn you up. So what he told Moses, he said, look, you can't be in my presence, but what I will do, I'll hide you in a, in a rock, in a, you know, in a, in a, in a cleft of a, of, a, of a mountain. I will pass by and you can look at the back side of me, the end of me. And so he did that. He put Moses into the cleft of a, of, of a mountain, got passed by and Moses was able to see, you know, the very end of him. And it was like, and it was, it was described as a fire, a furnace, fire, hot. And Moses could not even withstand that. He could not even stand the remnants of being in the presence of God without the mountain to protect him. The presence of God is hot. It's, we see that angels, it's possible that angels are made of fire. We know for a fact, it says in the Bible, in the book of Isaiah, that the seraphim, which are um, a type of angel, a type of Elohim, they are said to be made of fire and they occupy the spiritual realm. So the spiritual realm is a, is a place that's hot. The beings who are in the spiritual realm can withstand that type of heat, that type of energy. So to be in the presence of God means that you can withstand a tremendous, unbelievable amount of heat. So not only are you withstanding that heat, if you are in the presence of God, it's, it's pleasurable. We are meant, humanity, we were meant to dwell in the presence of God. That is our optimal place. That is where we are happiest. That's where we will be happiest. Again, as we start to talk about in the next couple of episodes, our destiny is to dwell in the presence of God. We'll see in the last couple of chapters of, of Revelation, it says that, it says uh, pretty blatantly that God's place is now with men. He will not be in some place separate from man. God will dwell with man, meaning that we will be able to be in his presence. We'll be able to withstand, not just withstand the energy and heat of his creation, of his presence, rather. We will bask in it. So what our optimal state spiritually is to be in that presence. We'll be, it, it, that presence makes us happy. That, makes, that presence makes us be all that we can be, all that we want to be. We will be happy. We'll have joy unending in the presence of that tremendous energy and heat. That's what we were made for. What does that have to do with hell? Well, what is hell? Again, hell, among other things, is separation from God. So by definition, the further you get away from God and the heat that he, uh, he that his presence creates, the, the colder you are. And if hell is eternal separation from God, then hell is going to be colder than heaven. Or to put it another way, as you'll see in the, in the title of this episode, he heaven is hotter than hell. I know I'll give you a second to, to take that in. Heaven is hotter than hell. But wait a minute, isn't hell hot? Sure it is. It's 450 degrees, but that's not as hot as heaven is going to be. Why is that torture? And why would it be hot at all? If, it's separated from, if there's separation from God, why would there be any heat in hell? Well, because... The spiritual realm is consciousness. Our spirits are consciousness. The real you is not the flesh body you're in. The real you is your thoughts, your memories, your personality. The real you is spirit. And that spirit has energy to it as well. This isn't just, you know, me being esoteric. It's this is scientific. When you if you go to the hospital and they're measuring your brain waves, they put these electrodes on your head and they're measuring the electric output of your brain because as you think there is electricity happening. The, the neurons uh, in your brain, the, 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 um, the, excuse me, your brain cells, your neurons, they, they process your thoughts physically through, through energy. Electricity is going on in your brain right now. Every thought you have is a spark that's going between the, the neurons in your brain, the dendrites and axions. That's energy. And that's your thoughts. So your thoughts are energy. All thoughts are energy. Even the thoughts of the evil people who will be in hell is still energy because they're eternal. Your spirit doesn't go away. So the heat that will be in hell will be because there will be, unfortunately, billions of souls there, billions of spirits there. So they will generate some heat just because they exist. But it will be far, far less than the heat that's in the presence of God. So hell will be hot because you know, the spirits will be there but it will not be as hot as heaven. It will not be where our spirits were intended to be. And that is where the torment comes in. Listen to this. The torment of hell for people, the people who will be in hell will know that they are separated from God. They will know that they are far, far away 
from that heat, that energy, that light that they were intended to be in. God's intention is for man was for man to be with him forever. The torment of hell is spending eternity being less than what you were intended to be. Let me say that again. The torment of heaven is spending eternity knowing that you are less than what God intended, less than what would have made you ultimately happy, less than what would have given you eternal joy. And that will be torment. Not only is it torment, it's justified torment. Why? Because everyone who is in hell is there for one reason and one reason only, because they they rejected God's invitation to be with him forever. They made a decision in their head, in their minds, in their hearts that they wanted to be separated from God. So it's only just that they would get what they want. What they got is eternity away from God. And they're going to realize that in this place that is cold and dark forever. And it's and they're there because of their choice. Their torment is knowing that their choices led them away from the eternal joy that they could have had. That is just punishment. And as far as the levels of punishment, I would say that the more evil you are, the further from God you are, the colder you will be. So again, the Hitlers, the Jeffrey Dahmers, the Jeffrey Epsteins, the Attila the Huns, they're going to be much further from God in hell than say, you know, a person who was a, a nice enough human being, but just was an atheist. They'll be closer. They'll be a little bit warmer, I guess, than the evil people. But the truly, truly horrible evil people will be even further. So that is their torment, being separated from God. I know that's provocative. I know it flies in the face of what we've been taught as Christians for most of our lives. But when you think about it, it actually makes way more sense. And this isn't just something that, you know, I created that I pulled out of my rear. You can you can Google this. There's there are you Google heaven hotter than hell. You'll come. They'll, you'll see some articles where certain scientists look at it from the biblical standpoint that, you know, again, fire and brimstone, fire and sulfur is 450 degrees. There's a passage in Isaiah that says that that hell, excuse me, that heaven is actually the the temperature of the reflection off the moon, which is about a thousand degrees. You know, so you can use that argument there. But I think that heaven's going to be even much hotter than a thousand degrees. But in any case, there, look it up. I mean, look it up for yourself. It's, it's provocative. I think it's interesting, but I think it's far more just than this idea of being tortured with fire the way we would be tortured with fire as human beings forever. Because again, our, we won't have, no one in hell will have a physical human body. It'll be spirit. And I, I think that this is a much more just, um, a much more just depiction of of what hell is and it actually makes sense and it makes it makes God just and it makes the torment of the people who choose to be away from God it makes that just as well and there are areas in literature that actually speak to this whether intentionally or not you look at um, the Divine Comedy by Dante the the Italian poet and he, the first part of the Divine Com Comedy is called the Inferno Dante's Inferno and in Dante's Inferno, there, hell is depicted as having nine levels. And the ninth level is that, or, you know, which is the worst level is actually cold. It's not hot. It's, it, it's the coldest part of hell. So that's interesting. I don't know if Dante had this same, same thought process or if it's coincidental, but, you know, I do find that interesting. Another very interesting literary depiction of hell is in the book by uh, C.S. Lewis called The Great Divorce, where he with the big picture story is that there are some people in hell who get a chance to he, it's more like a purgatory thing, but uh, there's no such thing as purgatory. But, you know, I think I, I'll, I'll give uh, C.S. Lewis his creative license where basically some people who were in hell are able to to come to the outskirts of heaven briefly to speak to the two people who they knew on Earth who are now in heaven and to try to convince them to, you know, to go from heaven, go from hell to heaven. And again, that's not biblically accurate. Once you're in hell, you know, that's final judgment. You can't get back. You can't get to heaven after you're in hell. But what's interesting about the story of the great divorce is how C.S. Lewis depicts hell. And he depicts hell, again, not as hot. He depicts hell as cold and gloomy and rainy and dark. So very interesting. So I recommend reading the great divorce just for um, entertainment purposes. It's, it's a very interesting book. 
So yeah, that's it. Um, this is a shorter episode. Um, again, I don't want to keep dwelling on hell. It's not a pleasant subject to talk about, but I think the idea that heaven is hotter than hell and that hell is dark and cold, relatively speaking, and people will be tormented by the idea that you know they will never, that their choices led them away from God forever and they will spend eternity not having the joy that they could have easily had by simply accepting the sacrifice of Jesus. I think that's just, and I think that is a more accurate, in my opinion, depiction of hell. But if you disagree, tell me. If you think that someone being on fire and in you know a severe torture for millennia, century, forever and ever, you know, let me know. Let me know why you think that is just for someone who spends seventy years on Earth being evil. If it is, if it's just for them to spend eternity on fire being tortured, or if you think. If you or if you agree with me that it will be their eternal regret, the eternal torment of of just knowing that they're separated from God. Anyway, I'm going to wrap it up here. One of my shortest episodes. I'm actually proud of myself for doing that. Um, and um, in the next episode, we're going to start talking about the good stuff. We're going to talk about God getting what he finally wants, God's will being fulfilled and his will is for us to dwell with him. And we're going to talk about the glory, the beauty of heaven or more accurately, the new Jerusalem. So thank you for listening and watching. I appreciate it. Please subscribe to Faith by Reason by putting your uh, your email in the right navigation area. Feel free to subscribe on YouTube or Rumble or wherever you're seeing this episode. And I will talk to you next time when we wrap up the Revelation series with the how, about how it will talking about how it will be in the glorious presence of our God, of our creator forever and ever. Talk to you later. 